Shalom everyone, it's called Torah, and today we'll discuss the Torah portion of the week, which is Kitisa. One of the most famous events that takes place in this parsha is the unfortunate event of the golden calf, Cheta Egel. The Jewish people cannot really even wait more than 40 days before committing a tremendous sin. After hearing God's voice, seeing the revelation on Sinai, receiving the Ten Commandments, and they just can't stop themselves. And some of them, or all of them, it depends on the interpretations. Basically, creating one of the most tremendous sins in Jewish history, the golden calf. And today I would like to try to deal with one question. How can they do that? How can someone with little brain can really think that the golden calf was God who took you out from Egypt? It does not make any sense. How can we try to explain it? And what is really the relevant message to us in the 21st century? So this question obviously stimulated many, many sages to try to think and to try to come up with some kind of an idea of what went wrong. Some commentators try to shift the blame to the people who joined the Jewish people upon leaving Egypt. So it was not really all the Jewish people, it was only 3,000 people. But still I think the question remains, how can you do that? Some people believe that they really did not think that the golden calf has any divine attributes but they wanted to create, in a way, an, an item, a tool, an instrument, that through it, God will reveal Himself to them. That's an interesting suggestion. I think that I would like to suggest maybe a different angle. You know, 40 days basically passed between the revelation on Sinai and the golden calf. With all the good examples and explanations, it's still the question remains, how can you lose what you gained just 40 days ago? The answer that I would like to suggest is, it faded away. And what do I mean by that? When God revealed Himself on Sinai, there was a lot of excitement. It was an inspirational moment in Jewish history. God Himself is going to reveal Himself to everyone, to every Jew. And Moshe instructed the people that for three days they need to get ready, they need to get prepared, they need to train themselves. And the moment arrived. But the question is, not what's happened at the moment, not even what happened before that moment. The main question is, what happens the minute after that moment? So those who really were engaged with it and really realized that it's not just a nice inspirational excitement, some kind of a nice experience, they took it to heart, they made a commitment, they continued. But for many, it was like going to a wonderful movie that you talk about that movie for a day, two, three, even a week or two. And later on, it just faded away. What I want to suggest is that I really don't know exactly what was the cause for the Jewish people or for a part of the Jewish people to create such a tremendous sin. But I think that the reason for how people can change their mind in a minute, in 40 days, after hearing and listening and watching God Himself reveal Himself on Mount Sinai, I think we do have an answer for that. Experience, sometimes inspirational moments are good for the moment, but are not necessarily a permanent mark on someone's personality. So what's the message for us? I think when we talk about Yiddishkeit, when we talk about commitment, we need to have both. We need to have inspirational moments in our lives. 
may it be art or music or a beautiful speech or a beautiful class or just to observe people's behaviors and to be inspired. But at the same time, we need to learn and commit and use our cognitive abilities to enhance our Jewish experience. When you have both, when we have the inspirational part and you have the cognitive side, when you intertwine them both into one unit, then I think we will not commit yet again a golden calf. So today, let's pledge for twofold commitment to be inspired, to be inspired, and to aspire ourselves to real religious growth. Thank you.